Out of all of the weird looking vehicles on the road, on the water, and in the sky, these retro vehicles are sure to turn heads. This is Glenn, and here are 15 crazy retro vehicles you won't believe existed. Number 15. Paul Lewis from Denver, Colorado had a big idea for a futuristic three-wheeled vehicle in the early 1930s. From his design, we get the 1937 Airmobile. The aerodynamically styled model was created by the same group that designed the 1936 Lincoln Zephyr. The Airmobile is front-wheel drive and can easily reach speeds of 80 miles an hour. Lewis toured the USA on a promotional tour covering over 45,000 miles in the vehicle, which averaged over 43 miles per gallon. Unfortunately, Lewis was unable to secure financial backing for production, and the car never made it out of the prototype stage. If you want to see this vehicle, it remains on display in the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada. Number 14. It's a car. It's a boat. No, wait. It's a car that's designed to look like a boat? Taking its inspiration from the nautical world, the runabout was supposed to combine the beauty of European design with the practicality of a pickup truck with the open design of a roadster. The runabout came with a 2946cc V6 engine, which produced around 200 horsepower. The car was made using hardwood just like in a yacht and needed extra steel bracing for rigidity, so it was rather heavy. It did have a jet ski that you could tow in the back of the car, however. This car definitely had an interesting style. Maybe that's why it never made it out of the concept stage. Number 13. The Optica made its first flight in December of 1979. A light aircraft designed for low-speed observation work, it was also a low-cost alternative to helicopters. It was powered by a 160-horsepower engine and had a max speed of 132 miles per hour. It had a bubble-like cabin which offered 270-degree panoramic vision to the pilot and passenger. It's powered by a ducted fan, which makes it exceptionally quiet, which is saying a lot for a 27-foot-long plane with a wingspan of 39 feet. Around 22 of these aircraft were made, with 10 being destroyed in an arson attack on the company. The company recently came back under control of John Edgy with rumors to bring back Optica production as early as 2019. Number 12. If you're looking for weird cars, well, I've got one here for you. The Capsula was an ambitious move to design a modular vehicle. The capsule cabin could be changed to work better with your needs. The vehicle could transform into a commercial vehicle, an ambulance, a fire truck, and even a school bus with the quick change of the capsule. It had storage compartments under the capsule built into the chassis between the wheels for easy, out-of-the-way convenient storage of luggage. Although all of the cars kind of look like a box on wheels attached through a Lego platform. Maybe that's why it never made it to full production. Number 11. Now, I know this little car looks like a battery-operated one that you would buy for your children, but I wouldn't trust them to be driving this around. Most of the mechanical parts, including the engine, came from a few different Fiat models. It also had a four-wheel independent suspension system. The engine is in the back while still supplying power to all four wheels for as much off-roading as you're willing to take in this vehicle. Only 600 of these little vehicles were made, and only about 50 are still around. It might be hard to get your hands on this one, but we have seen some for sale for around $50,000. Number 10. This one-person city car was nicknamed the Raincoat. It's powered by a 150cc engine, giving it a top speed of around 30 miles an hour, and it was a three-wheel design. The car is so narrow that you could actually drive it into your house right through your front door. Given, of course, you don't have stairs leading into your house. The engine and front wheel can turn 180 degrees, you know, because the car didn't have a conventional reverse gear. The top of the car is made from canvas as a safety measure. If the car were to flip onto its only door, then you could just bust out through the top. If you're wanting this car, well, it is on display at the DAF Museum in the Netherlands. Number 9. Designed originally on the theme of cars for the year 2000 and debuted at the 1992 Turin Motor Show, the Biga is a very interesting concept. 
cut down to bare essentials, this minimalistic vehicle wasn't made for everyone to own. The Biga was made as part of a project aimed at traffic management. Using a personal car recorded in a database, users would be able to borrow the car from a designated parking space, use it, and then park it in another dedicated parking spot. Kinda like how big cities are doing it with bikes, but, you know, with a tiny car. With only one door in the back and four seats inside, this car really did cut down on all the extras. This is another one that never made it to full production. Number eight. Marcel Layot has built around 30 different propeller-driven cars, but only two still exist today. While this car looks like it might pop out some wings and just take off, this propeller stays grounded. The Massey propeller was driven by an eight horsepower engine. While eight horsepower seems lacking, the lightweight wooden body, aluminum wheels, and lack of conventional vehicle engine, this little car could scoot. Some of the vehicles made could travel over 100 miles per hour. While Layotte was convinced that propeller-driven cars were the way of the future, it seems not everyone was in line with that idea. But one of the vehicles is on display at the Museum of Automations in Grenoble, France. Number 7. At first glance, this might look like the Pope's Sunday driver, but don't count on this vehicle having bulletproof glass. The clear doors aren't even glass. They're made from acrylic to give the driver a clear view of the road passing beneath them and to provide the feeling of freedom that you get from a motorcycle. It also had different configurations for the vehicle. It could be all enclosed with canvas top up. It could be a convertible with it down. You could even fold the windshield down to feel the wind on your face. It had only enough room for two people and a very small amount of luggage. But then again, the car was only made for a few. The Moto Machine was an exclusive car that was only made available to Gurgle's shareholders. Number six. Constructed by students for the Aeolus race in the Dutch town of Den Helder, the Ventomobile is definitely a crazy vehicle. The giant propeller on the back of this mad three-wheeler is able to be turned into the wind, and with the pitching of the blades, it can be adjusted to the wind speed. With its light weight, only about 300 pounds, it was able to travel at 64% of the wind's speed with it blowing directly at them. The giant propeller is six and a half feet in diameter and supplies the vehicle with six kilowatts of power. The students ended up winning first place for this design. This one won't be roaming your city streets on a windy day. That is, unless you get out there and build one. Number five. No, this isn't some massive pill bug from Starship Troopers Nightmares. This is the 1951 Hoffman. This three-wheeled car is considered by some to be the worst car ever made. Made after the war from basically any spare parts around, the vehicle was very cramped and many of the design features left us scratching our heads. The starter button is placed down by your hip. The windows are movable through a leather strap attached to the bottom. The gas filler is located on top of the car with a tube that feeds through the cabin and the shift pattern is linear with neutral in between each gear. Rear wheel steering is the biggest blunder in a three-wheeled vehicle. Fortunately for other drivers on the road, there was only one of these ever made. Number four. The 1992 BMW Columbus was introduced to mark the 500th anniversary of the discovery of America. The car was christened a sailing ship for dry land making it one of the weirdest vehicles we've ever seen. The car was 20 feet long, so it definitely felt like you were driving a boat. The V12 BMW engine pushing out 300 horsepower. It had seven seats with the option of nine since the interior could be modified. Each passenger seat was hooked up to a TV with a connected cable and a VHS system. The raised driver's cockpit is said to give the drivers greater visibility of the road at the cost of looking silly. With its massive size, this car never made it to full production. Number three. The Sea Ranger looks like something straight out of a science fiction novel. Built on a Mercedes Unimog chassis, this car is extremely capable in rough terrain. The cabin is entirely watertight, and the Sea Ranger is also an amphibious watercraft. There's a seat positioned on top of the vehicle near the back next to a radio antenna that was made for easy fishing off the roof of your car. Although, it seems more like a gunner seat on a spacecraft. 
It made its debut at the 1980 Hanover Fair, and while it drew quite a bit of attention, there just wasn't enough for it to be manufactured commercially. So for now, we just get to admire it at the Kalani Design Museum in Kensington, London. Number two. This 28-foot-long monster is a rare sight to behold. The only Oldsmobile to be professionally built into a limousine was the Toronado, and it was named the AQC Jetway 707. The 707 could fit 12 to 15 people inside it. It had nine doors and a twin axle in the back, making it the first stretch limousine to use them. It had a Vista Cruiser-style roof with integrated skylights for extra fancy headroom. It also had an enclosed cargo area in the back. The car is, surprisingly, front-wheel drive, which, we're guessing, made it easier to stretch the car. Anywhere from 50 to 150 of these cars were made, but not many survived. Though, we did see one sell for around $5,000, but that was without a motor. Before we show you our favorite retro vehicle, don't forget to comment down below and let us know which one was your favorite. Number one. This little butte started out life as a 1955 Ford. Then, crazy man and custom car builder extraordinaire Gary Fioto chopped it, slammed it, and slapped on a few other parts and made this space-age-looking vehicle. Its crazy bubble top is actually the biggest bubble top ever created for a vehicle. All the body panels are hand-formed using 18-gauge steel. Powered by a Chevy 350 V8 that is exposed through the hood, this car is definitely a showstopper. All the door handles are also electric, so no door handles on this bad boy. And even the bubble top is lifted by motors. As much as we know you want this car, it's actually a one-off and was sold at auction in California for over $360,000. Hey guys, this is Cassie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell us in the comments below what you found to be the most interesting and why. Also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.